All right, now we're working on section 6.2. Factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is equal to 1. This means basically no leading coefficient. All right, so first, always remember to factor out the GCF from all terms. This is the very first thing we do. So number 1, factor them out. Number two, enter x as the first term of each factor. So we set up two parentheses with an x at the beginning and then a bunch of space. Okay, we list pairs of factors of the constant c. That's your trailing constant. List pairs of the factor and find pairs of these factors whose sum or difference depending on the second operation. So I'm gonna shade that in red, depending on that. If it's a plus, you're going to add the factors to equal B, and if it's a minus, you're going to subtract the factors to equal B. Okay, place these factors in the boxes, these two boxes right here. That's where those two factors go. Check your answer by multiplying, by foiling the two factors, and you should obtain your original trinomial. If none of the possible factors of C, including negative factors, add to give you B, then the trinomial is considered to be prime. All right, so here we go. Okay, x squared. So what we do is we go choo, x, leave some space, a parenthesis, leave some space. Put an x at the beginning. So I need factors of 20 that add to 9. So factors of 20 are 2 and 10. Well, 2 times 10, 2 plus 10 is 12, so that's not going to work. Um, 4 and 5, 4 plus 5 is nine. Oh, good, that's my B, so that does work. So I put the four and the five, and then I wanna look at this first term, uh, sorry, operation. That's going to determine whether I put pluses into both of these or minuses into both of these. Since it is a plus, I put plus. Now, I foil this to make sure I'm right. So, x times x, x times 5, 4 times x, 4 times 5. Sure enough, I get x squared plus 9x plus 20. So, that's a check myself a little more space by zooming in a little more. All right. B. Okay. We're going to factor this. I need factors of 12 that add to 7. Well, what are my factors of 12? 2 and 6. Those don't add to 7. 3 and 4. Ooh, those add to 7. So, 3 and 4. Now I have to go check out this sign, the first operation, and that tells me that this is going to be, whoops, not a plus, a minus and a minus. So, x minus 3, x minus 4. I can check this by doing the FOIL. x squared minus 4x minus 3x plus 12. So, x squared minus 7x plus 12, and sure enough, 
check. That's correct. All right. Again, set up our parentheses with X's. Factors of 42 that subtract to 1. So what are my factors of 42? Well, the first one that comes to mind for me is 6 times 7. Sure enough, those would subtract to be 1. So I have 6 and I have 7. But now... I need them to, with this as a plus, oops, I'm sorry. That should have been highlighting. With this as a plus, tells me what my largest should be because that's what's going to win, right? It's going to have the positive. So it's plus 7 minus 6, which gives me a plus 1. So I check this by foiling x squared plus 7x minus 6x minus 42. I put these two together, x squared plus x minus 42. Sure enough, check, that's correct. Now we're gonna look at D. Okay. X, X. All right. Factors of 72 that subtract to 1. My factors of 72 are, first off, I think of 8 times 9. Facts subtracting to 1, that works. Okay, so I put in my 8 and my 9. Now I look at my first operation. That tells me what the largest number should be. So my 9 is my largest. Oops, <laughs> I was supposed to be doing that in purple. Plus. And it makes my smaller 8 a negative. All right, let's check this. X squared. plus 9x minus 8x minus 72, x squared plus x minus 72. Check. Okay. x, x, Factors of 42 that subtract to 1. Well, my factors of 42 are the first one, again, that comes to mind is 6 and 7. They do subtract to 1, so 6 and 7. We look at the second operation, this subtraction, to tell us what our largest number should be. Since 7 is my largest, and that's a minus, I end up with x minus 7 and an x plus 6. Again, I check it. I have x squared minus 7x plus 6x minus 42. I add these together. Negative 7 and a positive 6 leaves me with negative x. And sure enough, that's my original equation. Okay, now again, x, x, all right, factors of 30 that add to 11. Factors of 30 are, well, I think of 5 and 6. You could go for 3 and 10, but 5 plus 6 is indeed 11. 3 plus 10 is 13. So 5 and 6 it is. So we have 5 and 6. The first 
sign or operation tells me which operation these are. They should both be subtractions. All right, and we check it. X squared minus 6x minus 5x plus 30. Sure enough, x squared minus 11x plus 30. I believe that's it for that page. Yes, moving on to the next page. There we are. We gotta make this a little bigger. Oh boy, more factoring, yay. Okay, so we have x, x okay factors of 56 there we go factors of 56 that add to 15 okay that's a pretty big number so what are my factors of 56 uh, let's see, 14 times 4, or 7 times 8. Do those add to 15? They sure do. So I have 7, and I have 8. Since it's an add, the symbols are both the same inside. And they're both subtractions. Okay, x minus 7, x minus 8. Foil, x squared, minus 8x, minus 7x, plus 56. All right, 8 and 7 is 15, so that gives me x squared minus 15x plus 56. So check, that is correct. Okay. X All right Factors of 36 that add to 12 All right factors of 36 6 times 6 Oh that's my 12 isn't it 4 times 9 but that is 13. So 6 and 6. OK, my third term. Sorry, my first operation is a plus. This tells me these are both pluses. OK, now what this is, x plus 6 squared. And we do have a formula for that x squared plus 2 times <coughs> 6 times x plus 6 squared. 2 times 6 times x is 12x. So sure enough, I have x squared plus 12x plus 36. Come on. Okay, some more practice x x factors of 77 that subtract to 4 okay what are my factors of the first one i come up with is 7 times 11 if i add 7 and 11 no i'm subtracting aren't i If I subtract 7 and 11, I get 4. So that works. 7 and 11. I now look at my first operation. That tells me that this is going to the largest is negative, which is my 11, which makes my x plus 7 as my factor. Okay, so now we're going to check this. x squared 
minus 11x plus 7x minus 77. 11x and 7x add to, oops, sorry, subtract to a negative 4x. And yes, that's going to be my answer. Okay. Factors of 20 that add to 10. Four, nope. Four times five is nine. Two times 10 is 12. And that's it. Oh, and 20 and 1, which is 21. So none of these work. So this is prime. All right, now we've got a second variable. Woohoo! Okay. So we've got x. And since I've got a y squared at the back, I have a y here. What I don't know is what the coefficient on the y is going to be. For the coefficient, I need factors of 42 that subtract to 1. Four and, uh, 6 and 7. 42 is 6 times 7. And if I subtract them, I get 1. So I have a 6 and I have a 7. All right. My first operation is negative, which tells me my largest has to be a negative, which is my 7y. So that's a minus, and that's a plus. So now I'm going to check this. x squared minus 7xy plus 6xy minus 42y squared. And sure enough, when I add these two, I get a minus xy. So that means, check, my answer is correct. Oh, I still got a bunch more. Okay, I was thinking I was further along. That's all right. x squared minus xy, oops, I don't like doing it in red, somehow that feels angry, x, because I have a y squared, I have a y at the end, all right, factors of 30 that subtract to 1 are 5 and 6, so I have 5y, 6y, my first operation is a minus, so my largest is minus, so it's a minus 6y with a plus 5y. I'm going to check it, x squared, minus 6xy, plus 5xy, minus 30y squared. That adds to a negative xy, which is what I had, so check. That one is correct. All right, notice I have a common factor here. I have a two in each one of these. So I'm going to factor out that GCF of two. So I'm going to rewrite this as two x squared plus three x minus 10. Now I factor that. So I still have my two, but I have the factors starting with x as well. Factors of 10 that subtract to 3 would be 5 and 2. Uh, the larger is plus, and that's my answer. Okay, so now we're going to check this. I have x2 times x squared minus 2x 
plus 5x minus 10. And if I distribute the 2 in, I get 2x squared. Plus 5 minus 2 gave me a 3x times another 2 is a 6x. Plus 6x because the 3x was, two, was positive. Minus 10 times 2 is minus 20. And sure enough, that's my original trinomial. Okay, 3x squared minus 21x plus 18. They all have a 3 in them. Minus 7x plus 6. All right, that looks interesting. I need factors of 18 that add to 21. That's much bigger. 2 and 9 wouldn't work, but 18 and 1, nope. Not 18. I'm sorry. <sighs> dear, dear, dear. Wrong things I'm looking at. Factors of 6 that add to 7. Again, it's larger, but that's okay. Because 6 times 1 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. So that works. All right. So that means I have with the 3 out front, x, x, uh, 6 is 6 and 1. The minus tells me that they're both minuses. Because the plus tells me they're the same. All right, now I'm going to check these. x squared minus 6x minus x plus 6. Well, minus 6x and minus x is minus 7x. Now when I distribute the 3 in, 3x squared minus 21x plus 18. Sure enough, that's what I started off with, so I have a check mark for being correct. All right, now we're at the last one. All right, look, we've got some common factor here. 20, it looks like. So I'm going to factor out 20 x oh nope wait a minute we weren't done notice i can factor out each one has a y so i'm going to factor that y out as well now that leaves me with whoops with x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay. So now I have 20y and the pair of parentheses starting with x. Factors of 6 that add to 5 are 3 and 2. The negative tells me they're both minuses. All right. So we're going to check this. x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 6. These add to a negative 5x. So now when I distribute the 20y in, I get 20x squared y. 20 times 5 is a... 100. So it's minus 100xy. 20 times 6 is 120. So this gives me plus 120y. And check. Sure enough, that's what I started off with. Okay, this should be the end. It is. Hope you have uh, fun doing your homework.